morning and welcome to worship with us here at South Windsor Citadel. We're glad that you've joined us to worship our great and awesome Savior this day. This past Friday, April 22nd, was the official Moves Day for the Salvation Army and Captains Laura and myself found our names on the list to be moved and Captains David and Nairi Bond, who are currently serving as officers in St. Thomas, have been appointed to Windsor. And so that will all take place at the end of June. So we just ask for your prayers during these days of transition that you would pray for Captains Laura and myself, as well as Captain David and Nairi Bond in these days of transition. And we can continue to trust the Lord that he is directing things and that we can continue to trust that there are greater things in store for all of us. Let's dedicate this morning to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day and we just thank you for this opportunity where we could come and that we could worship Jesus our Savior. We're so grateful for the privilege to come and to just spend these precious moments in your presence. And Lord, as we do so, we just pray that the Holy Spirit would continue to minister to each of our hearts. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen.
that time of the year here at South Windsor Citadel and the broader Salvation Army within Canada and Bermuda where we put our focus on our annual Partners in Mission campaign. And our Partners in Mission campaign this year at South Windsor Citadel, we've got another ambitious goal of trying to fundraise $15,000 for the work of the Salvation Army internationally to continue to do the Great Commission that God has entrusted us to carry out. The Salvation Army is currently in over 130 countries around the world, sharing the gospel and meeting human needs. And so we just pray and solicit your support. As uh, in previous years, the Salvation Army has produced some videos highlighting the international work. And so at this time, we're going to watch one of those videos.
General William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army, started the Self-Denial Appeal in 1886 when he called on all Salvationists to deny themselves and to give what they could to support the ministry of the International Salvation Army. You will be interested to know that today the Salvation Army is active in 132 countries and every territory and command participate in the Partners in Mission Self-Denial Appeal. All funds from this global campaign go to international headquarters, who then distributes the money across the Army world. These funds ensure that the Army flag keeps flying in all 132 countries where it is active. For me, self-denial is a spiritual act. We deny ourselves to support the ministry of the Salvation Army beyond our borders so that others may encounter Christ. This year, we ask Canadian Salvationists, soldiers, and members to answer the question, what does self-denial mean to you? As you listen to the words of our faithful supporters, we hope that you are encouraged to give sacrificially and become a transforming influence in communities around the world. What does self-denial mean to me? Well, it's simple. We live in a land of opportunity, of, of abundance. And here's a chance to be generous to those who are less fortunate. Well, it means that we can be the giving hand of Jesus. Self-denial is looking past yourself and taking responsibility. Recognizing the privilege we have and using that privilege to give and empower others across the world in their relative communities. And it's also the joy of giving. Thinking about the needs of others before my own. Self-denial is rejecting your natural desires. Less of me, more of others. Bringing hope through the vehicle of the Salvation Army that we journey together with each other, even when we are physically apart. It means using what I have to help others. Self-denial is not about us, but about God and about others. I'm giving up a portion of what I have for others and for building the kingdom of heaven. Self-denial is dying to self. So this year, as I think about self-denial, I think about digging a little bit deeper to be able to assist someone in another part of the world who may not be able to assist. Thank you for joining us in supporting the International Ministry of the Salvation Army. Together, we can make a difference and reach the world for God.
Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew 28, starting in verse 1. Jesus has risen. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen. Just as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met and the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets out to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble." So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. May God richly bless the reading of his word. and May he use it to minister to us this day.
as we prepare our hearts to reflect on God's word, let's once again bow in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just pray that as we reflect on your word and its application to our lives this day, that your Holy Spirit would just open our hearts and open our minds to the message that you have for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you that your word is living and that it is still very applicable to us, your followers, this very day. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the way in which you are about to speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Final words are important. If you were to prepare your final words, what might you say to your loved ones? When I contemplate such a question, phrases such as, everything is going to be okay, or know that I'm very proud of you, come to mind. With so much to say, I think it would be hard to narrow down my final words to just a few short sentences or thoughts. We want our final words to be meaningful and to be remembered by those we love, and so we choose them with great care. Jesus' final words, recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, form what we know as the Great Commission. All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. While we attribute great value to all of Jesus' teaching, we might consider the particular importance of these final words. Having just journeyed through Easter, we know that Jesus had been arrested and had been crucified. On Easter Sunday, we celebrated together that Jesus defeated death and sin when he arose victorious from the grave. Last week, we reflected on how the living Jesus came alongside and traveled with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. We now find Jesus preparing to ascend into heaven, but before he does, he shares these final words with his disciples. We have considered how disappointed and dismayed the disciples must have been that things did not turn out the way they had envisioned. We can imagine how the disciples must have found their lives suddenly turned upside down by all that had recently transpired. The risen Jesus knows how vulnerable and how fragile his disciples are at this particular moment. But Jesus also knows how important it is for his disciples not to become disillusioned and to give up, but to continue on in his mission. Jesus' death was not the end, but was truly the beginning of what the disciples had been called to fulfill. Time is of the essence. The work that Jesus had begun could not be halted. The world needed to hear the message of the living Jesus. When we think of the Great Commission, we often recall the what of this commission. Sometimes all we recall of Jesus' final words as recorded in Matthew is, therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We often neglect to recall what comes immediately before and after the specifics of the commission. If we were simply to leave it at that, it would be quite an intimidating command. And yet Jesus, in his ultimate wisdom, knew the disciples needed some reassurance, some building up. Purposefully housed within the Great Commission, Jesus' last words is much more than what the disciples are being tasked with. 
Jesus begins his last words by reminding them that all authority in heaven and on earth had been given to him. He concludes the Great Commission with this assurance. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. It may be helpful to consider these statements a little more in depth to see how these final words of Jesus provide the disciples with the motivation needed to continue in the mission that he had set in motion. Let's spend a moment examining that opening statement. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. God the Father has bestowed on Jesus ultimate authority over and above all. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Prime ministers and presidents, kings and princes, along with other various rulers of this world, may have some authority, but that is typically limited by the boundaries of their respective nations. There is no human ruler who can claim to have authority over all the earth. Some rulers might like to think they have such authority. They might like to think that they control, can control what other nations do, but really there is no one with worldwide authority. However, the living Jesus proclaims that he has authority over all the earth. And not only that, Jesus further claims that he has authority over all that is in heaven. Jesus alone has ultimate authority over all. With the knowledge that Jesus has authority on earth and heaven comes a measure of courage. Courage to identify that while there may be powerful individuals on earth, while there may be individuals who abuse their power, while the disciples may face trying times at the hands of those in authority, Jesus has ultimate authority, and it is to him they remain committed. Jumping past the what of the Great Commission and to the final statement of the living Jesus, we hear Jesus reassure the disciples that surely he is with them always to the very end of the age. The living Jesus who has been given all authority in heaven and on earth is promising that he will always be with them. These final words of Jesus must have provided the disciples with a measure of solace. While they had witnessed him breathe his last, they stand before him now with the knowledge that death was not his end, nor the end of what he had called them to when he first extended the invitation for them to follow him. The assurance of his ongoing presence was exactly what the disciples needed to hear at that particular moment. The living Jesus is fully aware of the fears the disciples were feeling in the moments after his death and crucifixion. He knows this fear and disillusionment threatens to paralyze them. He knows their weaknesses and chooses his final words strategically with great care. As we read on in the story of the church, we read how the disciples did not cave to the pressure around them. They did not retreat as a result of the persecution they faced. They persevered with the commission that Jesus had provided them, strengthened by the knowledge of where true authority is found, and comforted by the assurance that Jesus is and will always be with them. It is difficult to know what would have happened if Jesus had not spoken these last words. I can't help but wonder if the church would exist today. It is hard to say whether the gospel would have reached the multitude of nations which it has. The living Jesus knew more important than the task 
he could delegate to his disciples would be the motivational words that needed to be heard in order for the disciples to gain the courage to keep going. He knew how important it was for the disciples to keep their morale up. As followers of Jesus, who have also been tasked to carry out the Great Commission, it is important that we consider how God's word applies to our lives today. With all that we face from day to day, we as disciples of Jesus at times may feel vulnerable. We may feel weary by all that has taken place and overwhelmed looking at an unsure future. The final words of the living Jesus are just as applicable and just as important and meaningful for us as they were for the original disciples. Today, the living Jesus wants to remind us that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. Nothing and no one we face will have more authority or power than him, ever. To Jesus, we can remain steadfast. He also wants to remind us that he is with us always, to the very end of the age. We will never experience or journey through a day, a moment, a trial, where Jesus is not with us. Authority rests in him, and with him we are never alone. The final words of Jesus provide us with the resolve to keep pressing on despite the apparent challenges that lay ahead. While we focus on the living Jesus and his promises, we can find the strength to keep on going. Time is still of the essence. The mission that we have received from Jesus must continue. Church, take heart. The living Jesus, the one to whom all authority belongs, is with us until the very end. Please allow me to guide you in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for the living Jesus. We thank you for the motivation and the assurance that his final words give us, his followers, his disciples, right now, that we can be reminded that all authority on earth and in heaven belongs to him and that he is with us to the very end of the age. And so, Lord, may we be reminded of those things this day, and may they just strengthen us and give us resolve to continue on in the great commission which you have tasked us with. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being your partners, of being partners with Jesus in sharing the good news of Jesus throughout the nations, right in our communities, and right throughout this world. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen.
Thank you for joining us for worship here at South Windsor Citadel. We pray that in these days you will sense the living Jesus in a very tangible, very concrete way in your life, giving you strength to fight temptations each and every day, giving you strength to walk the world in white, and giving you strength to share the good news with those you come into contact with each and every day. It is a privilege for each and every one of us to be a part of God's great plan of salvation for the entire world. Our benediction this morning is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, starting in verse 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Go in the strength of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>